Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life mister, sacred serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo, woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Well, guys, I had such a juicy, long interview with Jax Taylor from Vanderpump in person. You're going to get that in a second. But first, I just want to remind you to go over to HeatherMcDonald.net. Get your tickets to my live shows. I'm going to Vegas, Napa, San Francisco, San Diego, Irvine Improv, uh, Connecticut, New Jersey, the Hamptons. It's all there at HeatherMcDonald.net. You want to go do that. Also, some major stuff happened with Juicy Crimes, and I do a special Juicy Crimes right there on my Patreon. Go to heathermcdonald.net, click on that, join it, and hear the scoop that I did this weekend. Um, but first, let's get into some other amazing Real Housewives scoop. As you know, everyone was disappointed to hear that the legacy cast, all the OGs from New York, were going to get together and we were going to at least have that show. And then negotiations happened, they fell through, Everyone said it's Jill Zarin's fault because she wanted to be paid as much as the other girls. And all Jill Zarin said was, look, why can't we just do it? Favored nations. Everybody gets the same, like what happened on Ultimate Girls Trip. We all got $100,000 for the week. They're like, no, we're just not doing it. But wait a minute. That's actually a really great idea. Why don't we just do Ultimate Girls Trip with the girls from Legacy, but not invite Jill Zarin? Very sad about that, but the cast is still great. We've got Ramona, Luann, Dorinda, Sonia, and then they're bringing back Kelly Bessimone and also Kristen, Kristen Takeman, which I thought was interesting because when I interviewed Ramona, I said, was there anybody that you didn't totally jive with? And she's like, I actually really didn't think Kristen was like that interesting. Like, I mean, she's a really nice girl. She's a really pretty girl. I just didn't think she was that great. Anyway, maybe that's why they cast her. Maybe they heard the podcast and thought, you know what? Let's bring back a pretty girl that Ramona doesn't totally like. So anyway, they are going to Scary Island. They are staying at the same resort that they did, the same beautiful house that they did, um, I guess, in St. Bart's that season. Oh, maybe it wasn't Scary Island. It was whatever, season five. Season five, I guess they're staying at the same place in St. Bart's or something. They're only going to stay there for a week, and that's what's going to happen. Uh, Bethany, they was t had. Now we know from Andy Cohen's book that he talked to Bethany about it, and Bethany said, "Make me an offer I can't refuse." But I guess they gave her one that she did refuse, and so then she was out. Instead, she's doing what a Juicy Cooper described as middle class cosplay. Brilliant way to describe it. Now, Bethany, to fill her days, is going to places that middle-class people go. But for Bethany, oh my God, unbelievable. Olive Garden, are you freaking kidding me? Free breadsticks? Yeah. She goes to the dollar store. She goes to uh, Forever 21, and she reviews those the same way she did review makeup from drugstores. So, you know, good for her. Seems like she's killing it. Anyway... Then we got the trailer dropped for the new Real Housewives franchise, which are um, younger, interesting women that we have never seen before. And I don't know. People are kind of like, eh, eh. I will watch it. Hopefully there's enough juice in there that'll make me stay. I love the, seeing anything in New York City. These girls are all really attractive and, seemed inter and seem interesting. I hope they have some foundation of knowing each other. Otherwise, it might be a difficult sell. As you know, when the cast of New York started, all of them, almost all of them knew each other when it began because Jill put them all together. So, I, and that's why Vanderpump is so successful, which we talk about in, in the show later today. So hopefully this will be a hit and we can all really enjoy it. And now for Jax Taylor. Hello, and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I'm very excited, you guys. I have Jax Taylor, and I saw you last weekend. 
and I was very excited to see you. You looked adorable. Brandy Thank and you. I were a little handsy with you, and I did a, pr- a, a apology to uh, Cruz and Brittany. Oh, you don't have to apologize. being a little handsy for you. They, they I know, know who Brittany you are. wouldn't care. <laughs> I know Brittany wouldn't care, but we had a lot of fun hanging out at one of my favorite spots in La Quinta. Oh, my gosh. The Nest. The Nest is awesome. I it love really that place. It really is so fun. And we were just talking about how I was like, I didn't know if you're friends with Spencer Pratt, but I'm like, you guys should be best friends. So I've been going back and forth with him on, uh, we've been texting each other. Obviously, he's a father. I'm a father. You know, sometimes life boys. gets in the way. We're, we both got boys. boys. We're both ex-villains of reality. Well, villains. I was talking about ex. I'm still a villain. Uh, ex-villains, villains, whatever you want to think of, of reality TV. I think we have a lot in common. I do too. You know, I reached out to him, I want to say it was a couple of years ago. Hey man, how you doing? Yada, yada. Um, and we were talking about reality show and this and that. And we were talking about doing something together. Now I know he was in the middle of something going on him, him and Heidi doing a podcast together. He's like, I think this is a great idea. I'm just in the middle of doing something here, but let me see what's going on with that. And then I'll get back to you. And then we were supposed to have dinner and then something came up with Brittany and then something came up with Heidi. So it's 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 in the we're trying to make this happen. I think it would be great. And I, I think, think it would be hilarious would... if we him and I had a show together. Yes. I think you're very similar and in a fun way. Not too similar like the same person, but just I think your perspectives on Hollywood and reality show and everything. And that's why I want to have you on because I wanted to have you back. You were on a couple years ago and we've got obviously so many questions for you. I even had a title for it. I even told what them, is like, it? The, the, I, the Washed Up Boys. I really loved it. I, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> it's, I like the Washed Up Boys, you know? But it would, you know. It like was, lo- instead of Lost Boys? The Lost Boys, the Washed Up Boys. Washed Up yes. Boys of reality. But, yes. Uh, you know, like I said, like I said, him and I get along really well. And I would love, love, Spencer, if you're listening to this right now, got to do something together. Oh, got to yeah. do something together. But well, anyway. I will let him know. Okay. Let's talk about, first of all, where were you? When you heard, I know where I was, I was getting my roots done. Where were you when you first heard about Sandoval, Tom Sandoval having an affair with Raquel? Um, I got a phone call. I, okay, so the day before, I'm going to back it up a little bit. The yeah. day before, Brittany and I were, t- we took cruise to the Long Beach Aquarium. Fun. Then we decided to go to dinner. I got a text in my phone saying from Andy saying, hey, would you want to come on Watch What Happens Live next week? Um, you know, just this. And I'm like, this was just random. This was just, this is all, this is before I even heard anything. He's like, would you like to come on Watch What Happens Live next week? I was like, yeah, that'd be awesome. Whatever. And yeah, then the how ne- long had it been? It had been since before you left the show, right? right? Before uh-huh. I left the show, right? So then um, the next day I woke up, my friend, uh, Jason, Janet's husband, I don't know if you guys know who that is, um, re- yeah, reached, out, is reached this, out to me. He's wait, like, you I've were right. i heard about this Janet girl. Janet. Who is Janet? She is Brittany and I's uh, really close friend. Her and her husband are really close friends. They live down the street from us. They're in the circle. If They're that's... friends with Kristen, too. Yeah, Kristen, Ariana. Okay. Uh, she, in fact, she runs Ariana's merch line. Okay, but she has she, but she's not really been ever featured on the show or just like at she, parties? She's at parties and stuff okay, like that. Got it. Um, okay. So anyway, so J- Jason, her husband, texted me at 8 o'clock in the morning. He's like, you were right all along about, about that guy. And that's all he said. And I'm like, what? You're like, what, what guy? What, what yeah. guy? He's like, you haven't seen your phone? I go, no, I, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. I just woke up. I haven't looked at my phone yet. I'm drinking my coffee. He said, look at your phone. And I looked at my phone, and I was like, oh, my God. Did you have, like, a ton of texts? I had a ton of messages coming through. And then, you know, <laughs> and then um, it's so funny. Watch what happens. I've contacted me. Like, Jax, can we put you on hold for a week after? I'm like, thank you, God. I was going to text you guys saying, I please, I don't want to be the first one at Watch What Happens Live after this broke out. And, they're, and they were all laughing. They're like, no, no, we wouldn't do that to you. So we had Lisa on, and then I was the following week. But so, yeah, that's how it all happened. So I, were the texts from your cast members, or was it like everybody, the TMZ everybody. thing? Everybody. I had TMZ. I had all the tabloids. I had my friends. I had family. You know, and I've been out of it for a while, you know, so I don't really keep in touch. And when you, I don't keep... And when you heard, was there any doubt in your mind? Or like, because, I mean, when I first thought I was like, First, I someone sent it, and I was like, "No, no. they got it mixed up." But once it was TMZ, and then I wrote to Lala, and she confirmed it. I was like, "Of course, I was blown away." Because as someone that's just a fan, we were just seeing all the dumb rumors about her getting with Schwartz, never Sandoval. Right, that was a decoy. Yeah, now we decoy. know. I mean, yeah, that. But was But when a decoy. you first heard that, what was your first thought about? Not it? shock at all. This has been going on for years. He finally just got caught. I've been saying this for years. I've so been saying this for years. So now that I want to get to the, the 
the deep part. Nobody because wanted to believe we, me. When we watched the, your wedding. Yeah. And you were very annoyed with him and you're having a fallout with him. As a viewer, obviously not seeing except for what they give us from Vanderpump. Right. It was like slightly confusing why you were so like irritated with him. I've so been irritated now, with him but for, now for a long time. Why? Um, I just, you know, Tom and I have been friends, I guess. Well, we were friends for a very long time. He just kind of went off on his own path with different things in life. He's very eccentric. You know, I'm not, I'm a very, I don't know what's the right word. Well, like, let's just go back. The show started, you, okay, you came out here. One of the questions was, when you came out here you, from Florida, like, you were modeling there, right. I, but you came out here to pursue acting. Like, why did yeah, you come came, to L.A.? Well, I came out here. I did the New York circuit. I did the Miami circuit. I did Europe. The next stop was California. It's one place I haven't been yet. And I and Tom lived out here. And, you know. And, and you met Tom in Miami modeling? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He lived in my apartment. And then I moved into his apartment. So it was kind of vice versa. So oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, that was in 2000. Tom and I met each other in, I think, 2000. And then like that he, long ago, yeah. Wow. And then he moved into my apartment in 2003 in Miami. And then, so when you guys met, you were like 18. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, we've been friends for a long time. And like I said, he, everything was fine. I think it's just you know, and er, so then you guys, different. and Everybody so then you guys own. are all working at the restaurant, right? And it's and you and Stassi are a couple, right? From working at the restaurant, right? And then he and Kristen are a couple. And right. then Katie and, and Schwartz were a couple. Right. And you're all working at the restaurant with Sheena. And you first hear from whom that they want to film you guys possibly for a show. Uh, God, I was, it was like a month in of me working there. Lisa kind of came up because I was out. I was moving back to Florida. I Why was, were you going to leave? I just was done. You know, I was at an age where I was like, okay, I've done this game of modeling, acting, whatever. I need to go back and get a real job. You know, oh, I made, really? That was yeah, I thought? talked to my parents and I was like, I was what, 30 at the time? I think I was 30, something like that. And I was like, you know, my dad, my parents are conservative. You know, where, where's your money going? What are you doing? And this and that. And, and I was just at the point where I was just tired of chasing money. It was a tough, it's a tough world when acting you're, because, modeling you live and, paycheck and to paycheck and, and just, bartending yeah. yeah it was like this is not what i want to do with my life yes it's fun but it's only fun for so long and then what am i going to do so and was, nothing had like popped you hadn't gotten that no, movie or that no series. i did a yeah. bunch of little things right. and i was modeling it but i was modeling but there was it just wasn't fulfilling anymore i was mm -hmm. doing it for so long it was fun in my 20s but now you're getting i'm getting a little older my 30s it's just not it wasn't fun anymore you know and had you been a fan of reality TV or seen it or been approached by any other like have you ever been approached to be on like a dating show or anything when you were pursuing um, all this stuff? Uh Brittany, uh sorry, Stasi and I did a uh a, a little reality show together in the Bahamas for like four days. It was a pilot. And other than that, no, we never I never got into that. It wasn't my thing. You know, I've I've watched a little uh MTV like real world road rules, but that's how long ago this was. So reality TV yeah. was kind of just Still in the works when we started. It was yeah. what, how many years ago? 10, 11 years ago? Yeah. I mean, reality was kind of, it was good, but it wasn't like if you were doing reality, then you couldn't be an actor. Now it's not like that anymore. But in those days, when we started, it was like a kiss of death. It was a kiss of death. Exactly. Yeah. So my friends that were like, hey, should we do the show? Like, my, like Tom and Tom were still trying to be quote unquote actors. So they're like, um, you know, I don't know if this is a good idea. I want to be an actor, you know? And um, so at that, that time, that was the big confusion. That was the big like holdup. So they were, we had to really sell them on it. Oh, so you guys kind of knew, okay, so you convinced your group of friends, right. let's just do it. Right, right, let's just do it, why not, you know, and see what happens. And then I think slowly but surely reality people were starting to do acting. I think Nini was like the first one to actually get into the acting world. Yeah, she and did, I think Glee, there was a couple, and... Uh, real world people too that kind of made it into the acting world, a very cu a couple. So I think it was, it was happening, but it was just very slow. And I think people were just nervous about you know, crossing yeah. that world, you know. So, okay, so then the show is on, and I didn't even really watch it in the beginning. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, I don't know what this show, like, I wasn't that into it. And then when I started doing the podcast, people were like, oh, you should have these people on. So then I had Kristen, and then I had Stassi, and then I was hooked, and I was, so now I, I know all what's going on. You know, it's so funny, I, uh, I dove back into, I don't, I don't know if anybody knows, right? I don't, I tell everybody all the time, I don't watch the show. I don't like watching myself on so TV. So when it would air on a Tuesday night and no. you were on it, you would avoid it. No, I've never, I think until, the, until watching for the Peacock show, that's the first time really that I've watched a full episode. 
Why is that? I still because like it, watching myself because it was hard. Yeah. Well, it's not hard. It's I. Just, well, yeah, watching myself was. Oh my gosh, it was great. So, Brittany and I have a podcast when yeah. reality hits, and I decided to go back and did like the first two episodes to dive back into it because Brittany didn't really come on till season five. Right. So we were gonna go into it and watch a couple of the episodes. So I'm like, Brittany, I don't know if I can do this. She's like, let's just have a couple drinks, grab a couple beers, sit down, let's watch this. I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. And sure enough, I watched it and I was like, it was cringy. It was, I was like, God, who are you? Who is this person? I was just an utter train wreck. I'm like, I'm still somewhat of a train wreck, but I was a real train wreck then. I was just, I was just so lost. I was just such a lost, like very like spur of the moment, you know, fly by the seat of my pants. I mean, it makes for great television. Don't get me wrong, but I was just watching myself. I'm like, how the hell did anybody stand me, want to be around me, tolerate me, date me? How did any, I'm watching this. I'm like, this is awful. How could anybody watch this? This is terrible. And I'm talking about myself, mind you, not everybody else. I'm just talking about me. Yeah. And I just was like, how am I, I, I can't watch this. I think I got through 75% of the first episode. I go, Brittany, I can't watch this. This is terrible. This is just really bad. <laughs> so now I, okay, what I think is really interesting is I think. I'm so embarrassed. Like, but I'm I see, utterly embarrassed. Okay, so there's certain reality stars that I watch and, you know, like I interviewed Ramona, <laughs> Ramona Singer. You know who Ramona is? Oh, I know her okay. very well. And one of the things that we talked about is she really is someone that kind of based on her personality, but also like her childhood and that she'd block things out. She was kind of the perfect reality star that truly forgot that there's cameras. And then you see people come on later that are very manipulative and they pl they kind of start to plan it out. And you, you know, they're like literally taking notes before they go to the lunch. Yeah. And you obviously were one of those people. And I think that's why you, you know, were I great never, to watch. That's funny you say that. I, I never... There was certain people on the show that did that, rehearsed themselves. Raquel did that when she first jumped on. She would, we would catch her, to, like, literally have a script in her hand. And she would practice her lines, and we would catch her. I'm like, are you reading lines of a reality show that's supposed to be just off the cuff? And she was just really nervous at the time, in, in her defense. She was just really nervous. But we would catch her, like, reading lines before we're going into a scene. And, like, and these scenes are like, okay, we're going to go to a pool party. Like, how could you be practicing lines at a pool party? Like, I don't, what do you, I don't, you know, I didn't understand that. But, yeah, that did happen. She was just one of the ones that I saw doing it, but there was other people that did it because it's, it is nerve wracking. I mean, being on a show like this, especially with the girls on our show, they're very intense, you know, new well, girls don't stick around on the show very long, as you know, so well, they get let's bullied. Let's talk about Raquel and, you know, we know that she was a fan of the show right? and she knew that James was going to be performing there and she followed him to like a second location right. to, you know, flirt with him. And lo and behold, now she's on the show with her notes before entering, like, what are your thoughts about her? Like what are, now in retrospect, do you, how much do you think she plotted and planned? What is your perspective? I Everyone knows my perspective. I don't know her as well as, as everybody else. I think, I think that she may be going through some things upstairs. I don't know what's the, the, the right way to say this. I mm -hmm. think maybe, she needs to get some help. Mm -hmm. Is that the right way to say this? What's yeah. The politically, what's the political correct well, way to I mean, say this? I think she's, she's got some issues. Yes. Do we all have issues? Absolutely. Yes, yes, we all do. But I think she's got a little bit more than most people. And I okay. think maybe the show kind of magnified a lot of that. And I think it's a very overwhelming show to be on. And I feel like she just wanted to be accepted. I feel like she was maybe lost before she got on the show. She was kind of lost trying to figure out where she fit in in society maybe. Like, do I be a waitress? Do I finish college? Do I do this? I think she was kind of looking for it. And I think when the she pageants. got- The pageants. The pageants, all this stuff. I think, I think she was just kind of trying to look for herself a little bit. And then she found the show or got on the show. And I think she was just trying to be accepted and kind of fit in where- how can I be the most popular? What do I have to do to be the most popular or to get where I need to get? And maybe that was kind of a way that's, I mean, that's kind of how I look at it. I mean, what, what is do you your, think? what is, well, I do think the initial thought, which I was going to say, one thing that's interesting is when I interviewed like Stassi and stuff, yeah. it was once Brittany was on the scene and every person that I interviewed only had the greatest, nicest things to say about Brittany. Right. And I was like, you do know that. I've, I don't think I've ever talked to someone that has the most sterling reputation as Brittany, that everyone likes her. Everyone believes she Well, she was didn't want to be on the show. She, was. she didn't. I had to force her to be on. She wanted nothing to do with this. So getting her on so there, I, I had do, to like, I, 
I had to like, like beg her to do this. So in the beginning she was wanting no part of it. So that's, I think that kind of, you know, the girl saw that and be like, okay, she's not just a, another one of Jax's flings. So yeah. well, that's my other question. So with, with the cast, mm -hmm. as someone would date someone new, James being one of them dating Kristen. Right. How did James come on the show? Kristen. He kind of finagled his way in through Dodie. Dodie was kind of, kind of if, if you're looking for a, like, a, like a hole and like it's kind of, if you're looking for a way to get into it's that, not a hole, not wait a, a minute hole. i'm sorry not a hole. That, i'm just kidding Kristen. that that's not what i meant I'm you sorry. bet if you're looking, if for, you're looking uh, for a an entrance into an the group. entrance into the group sorry okay. that was a wrong way to put it yes. a hole oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry sorry Kristen. um if you're looking to it for a way into the group at that time Kristen was the most vulnerable one okay. so you would go through her if date her sleep with her do whatever you got to do because she was so vulnerable um and that's what he did and i mean i absolutely love James. Yeah, me too. I, I think him and I would get along real well. Personally, he's a sweetheart. Fucking hilarious. Like, and the kind of funny where he, he doesn't know he's really being funny, but he just really is funny. So it's like, it's just so great. Like, it's, there's so many great James moments that have been caught, you know? It's and, that the age he is is fun. You know, yeah. you're single, you're, and I, I'm sorry, I, you're single until you're married in my eyes. If you've yeah. got a girlfriend, you're, to me, you're still single. So you're single, you got disposable income, you don't really care about what's going on. I've been there, we all know that I've been there and you kind of don't have a care in the world, which this kind of area that he's in right now can be dangerous because you get sucked in by the light, you get a little bit of a diva mentality, which happened to me a few times, I got myself in some trouble. Um, so you have to be careful where you are right now, where he is, because you know, it's a dangerous area to be in when like everyone's liking you, things are going great because it just takes one little thing for you to fall. So I always tell him, just be careful everything you're doing. You're hilarious right now, but just, just tread lightly. Do you lightly. think that James thinks he's the number one guy in the group? I mean, I think it's a tie between him and Ariana. <laughs> no, and I, I hope, I, like I said, I love James. I think he's hilarious. I think he's grown up a lot. Um, I love watching him. In fact, I just got off the phone with him now. Uh, him and I are doing a night together at Sir next week. But uh, so we're, we're just, it's just having fun. What I'm, night, I'm happy what for night him. is that? Uh, June, no, is it next week? No, we're in June yet? No, June 13th. Okay, cool. Yeah, June 13th at Sir. We are having Okay, a, my birthday is June 14th. Should I come and I do a pre We're going to have a table. We're going to have fun. We're going to yeah. have the girls there. All right, I'm coming. Yeah, so, I'm coming. Okay. Um, I, I'm happy for James, though. He's doing real well. It's yeah. He's DJing and everything like that. And he, like I said, he just bought his first house. Yes, um, I saw the house. Looks really nice. When you heard they broke up, when you heard James and Raquel broke up, I mean, now there are I, I, can we, first of all let's back up into okay, to the uh up. to the the proposal okay do, do you find that weird that tom sandoval paid for the proposal i have thought that was so weird i thought it was did weird he not check his finance like who's his money person because now he has problems with the irs maybe you should have checked in with that guy before you spent 10 grand on planning somebody else's I thought it was 20 was it 20 grand okay i don't know okay but okay, okay so, so you're I, wait a minute wait a minute yeah. back up so you're paying Twenty thousand dollars for somebody else's proposal with a girl that you're gonna initially well you could have probably were already hooking up with. Let's be honest. He could have well, So what is your thoughts on that? Because uh, we know we they have fessed up to seven months, but there's a lot of, you know, area. Bravo, bravo detectives uh -huh. that have reason and strong theories to thinking it was before that. People thinking hundred percent was this part of planning the proposal that he wanted to show her that he was the better guy in a weird way or was it him just wanting to show the world that he had the money and because he's not good with money he's thinking 20 grand at that time like when it's rolling like well, tom what tom does this is tom's mm -hmm. thing his okay. mo he does things to look good on tv mm -hmm. he did it for me oh here's this and here's that and then like if you do something wrong he's like well, look at all the things that tom's done for you he uses this as a decoy like this is his, his mo he does things for other people so he looks good in front of other people, but he's not really a good person. Like that's, that's not how it works. And I've called this out and people were just like, no, he's, he's a good guy. Jax, you're just being this, and you're just being that. I'm like, no, like for instance, he gave me this, it's pretty, that sword with the signature yeah, of Randy Jackson's. Uh, it's, it's a kind of a, uh, uh, we love the movie, uh, Step Brothers. Okay. Okay. They did this exact same thing. They had a samurai sword where they got Randy Jackson. It's, we love Step Brothers and Will Ferrell. And it's kind of a running joke between me, Tom and Tom. Okay. It's a, kind of an inside joke that people don't know. Anyway, the fact that he got a samurai sword signed by Randy Jackson, my favorite movie, Step Brothers, it was great. But I had to return it. I know where this is going. He's Wait, why using do you this, have to return it? I just didn't want anything from that guy. He uses things against you. You returned it to him. I put it on his patio. 
I should. So probably, that probably. was like the Lisa Renner with the bunny. Yeah, I don't want anything from you. Like it's it because you use it against me later down the line. You you know it's just mm. it's just nothing from when him. When did you start to, sincere? Okay, because with that when that happened yeah. after the reunion, I um I was at Lala's who now looks next door to Sheena in Palm Springs. Right. And I was and I asked about that. I go, well, what was that about? Were they already hooking up? Why would he pay that money, or is he just really dumb with money? And he re- and he thinks twenty thousand was flowing at the time. I'll always be able to make twenty thousand dollars. Like, what was it? And I think they, it's a little bit of all that. They, I think it's a little. I think all of it. Mm-hmm. And also, both Sheena and Lala said he was that person that did all. That was the first to call you if someone died in your family. He was like always like the really nice person. To the gr- you know, but very he's not showy doing for the it, camera. But he's not doing yeah. it because wow, he's a good person. He's doing it so he looks good in front of everybody else. And also, I know it's hard to yeah. understand. And people will be like, Jack, you're reading into this. I've never been wrong on this show. Never. Never, never, never. So I know and I know this guy like the back of my hand. I've known him for twenty years. It's a it's a game. It's a show. It's it's a facade. It's not real. So then after twenty years of it and the sword and the wedding. What was that like aha moment where you're like, I, I see him for who he is and I'm just, I'm going to put my foot down. I just, I think, you know, leaving the show was kind of my, I, I didn't want to be part of this anymore because I knew what he was doing. Like I, he would get away with everything. He's literally been getting away with this for years. This is, uh, this is, Raquel is not the first girl. She certainly won't be the last. That's just. So you believe there were many? Yeah, I was part of it during the Miami situation. I was what there. What is the Miami situation? So that was Explain a week to after the, everybody what the Miami girl is because that has been brought up a lot in the last month. I think her name, in fact, her name is Anna Marie. That's her okay. real name. So about what season one or two, and that was it. Was literally a week after Tom and Ariana started dating. Okay. We did an appearance in Miami. We had some girls in our room. Fact. There was that girl was in our room. Fact. She was in the room next to mine. Fact. They hooked up. Fact. I I don't and that was literally a week after they started and dating. Then, That's a hundred percent true. I was did, there. I was literally ten feet away. I could hear the it's a hotel room. I can hear what's going on. Like And so now he's dating Ariana. Yeah. The, he and, Mind you, this is a week after they and started Kristen dating. Kristen and he had broken up. Yeah. But there was a my there was a he and Ariana kiss at the Golden Nugget Hotel pool God. with the shark tanks right, right. and the slide. Yeah. So it all time. overlaps. Yes. So, and that was, but they still went back and dated. He still dated Kristen after that, just like make out. Then they break up and he starts dating Ariana for good. Mm-hmm. And then this Miami girl comes about. How did the Miami, did the Miami girl DM Kristen? How did the girls find out about Miami well, girl? Well, you know, Kristen, she's MacGyver. She can figure out anything okay so i can't remember exactly it's been a long time how she got wind of it i don't really remember because i didn't say anything at that time i knew about it but i didn't say anything yeah, i don't like remember code, how right? she got wind like... of it i think maybe we, we met the girls at the pool in the lobby of the hotel and then they came back up to our room afterwards um and i think maybe the girl maybe just was like "Ooh, they're reality stars and he was out dating somebody maybe i can get them in trouble or maybe i should dm i think maybe she just got involved somehow i don't know i don't want to say but this is what i think so that's kind of like how that happened. Then she flew out here, right? So she flew out here. Kristen was like, you know, this is how Kristen is, right? She's excited about she it. She does do this too. She does, right? And she's behind. And then Tom, she showed this girl, Kristen, I think flew her out or she flew. I don't know how she got there. Ended up at Sir. Ariana and Tom are behind the bar. Tom's eyes get this big, bolts out of the restaurant, runs home like a little girl, runs home. Now he's done this before. When you approach him on things like this, he bails and can't just own up to it. So that's what happened. And and then Ariana. I think Ariana was just kind of like, I'm not going to listen to any of this. People are just trying to like, kind of like, I feel bad. It's the same thing even this season. She kind of didn't want to hear it. Like, she's like, you know, Tom is the type of person that does have a lot of friends and some of them are girls and I trust him. And she's really, I guess, had no reason not to trust him because he's hit it very well for very long, for so long that, you know, she really didn't have a reason. In your opinion, during their nine years of being in a committed relationship, owning a house together, doing a cocktail book together, which is a hundred percent should have never happened. In my opinion, in my opinion, I don't think you you should play house until you're married. Yeah. Well, you might as well be married. I mean, it'd be easier to be married and rent 
than to be not married and own a home together, in my opinion, as Especially, far as cutting es- the profits and all of that. Well, now, this for, for the exact reason of what they're going through right now. You know, poor Ariana, okay, yeah. has to deal with all Tom's tax issues, liens against his house, IRS owing this. Like, now she has to deal with that because she was connected to him. So now all of his crap that he's gone through, and this is the exact reason you do not buy a house with somebody. But she didn't know. She was looking mm-hmm. at Tom like, okay, he's going to take care of me. This is that. And little does she know, he was borrowing against the house to pay for the restaurant that he's got going on that's about to go under as well. So, I mean, if I was, I would just feel so bad for her. But you know what? I love that she's like doing so well right now and she's killing it. And I'm just so happy for it. And yeah. she seems so happy with this new guy who I want to be friends with. He seems like a really cool guy. Um, I mean, I just, yes. I, mean, I just, she but made... I just, getting back to the story about that, I yeah. just, this is why I personally, and this is my opinion, like you shouldn't play house because this is what can happen. This is what can happen. Well, I do think as a viewer, it seemed like a a major commitment move for a girl who throughout the show would say, I don't want to have kids. Right. And I don't want to get married. Okay. She said it over and over again. Right. And it, so then in I'm her like, defense, oh, though, but, she said this over right, and over. Right? right. So if Tom didn't like that, right. he should have left a long time ago. She made it very clear she didn't want A, B, and C. She wasn't like, well, it was a hidden thing and mixed signals she made it very clear this is the way she where she stood and then the fact that she after nine years of going against what she wanted and said you know what i love this man tom i'm gonna try to freeze my eggs when i saw that i was like oh my god tom you are cheating on her and she's literally took a decade of her beliefs and said you know what for tom's sake and because i love this man i'm gonna freeze my eggs even though it's something i don't want to do i'm gonna do this for the man that i love in the back of my head i'm like you were wasting all, you went to the doctor's office with Schwartz, doing all that stuff, knowing in the back of your mind that you're cheating, that you're probably not, like you're wasting all these people's time with people that really do want to have children. Like this guy, this doctor's office, it's hard to get in there. It's not like, you know, yeah. whatever. It's hard to get into these fertility qu- uh, clinics. I, I know women that are, they cry every day. They can't have kids and they're trying to get in and they can't afford it. They got to raise enough money. And you're just walking in here, la di da di da It's a TV show. I'm going to pretend to have, freeze my stuff. Like that is so F up. And what did, do you have any knowledge of what did happen? They never did make the embryos, right? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Let's the, hope they didn't. I should ask her that. I mean, let's I hope. I just talked to her the other day. I should ask her. Let's hope they I didn't. Hope um, I hope not. For Ariana's sake, because like I said. that Because now she, you like, have viable embryos, but it's with the, a person you don't want to deal with. Like, I mean, do you remember the Sofia Vergara case? That was a fucking nightmare. She made embryos with her ex. Right. And then they had a contract where. If we, if either one of us decide not to go forward, right. then we, then the, then they don't get made. She gets married to the hot guy. What's his name? Right. Manja Nella, whatever his name. Yeah. They don't want to have kids. They're like late forties. They're done. Right. She already has a son from when she was nineteen. That guy went to court. Everything trying to say, I want to raise those embryos so that he could hit her with child support, That's... and then she has two children out there. I mean, it was a oh, big I never of that. nightmare. So it's like you have to be really careful whether you're going to have a child like by yourself with right. a donor or somewhere where you like have complete control of it. Like look at, you know, Lala's awful situation, you know, or you're married and you're down and this is like, you know, but doing this. Can you imagine if they did go the next step and I then know, she found God. out about it or or even went further and she was carrying the baby like and just like <sighs> and, and like I said, taking a step further as a woman. OK, you are set into your your ways. Right. You, this is who you are. And then you show a tiny bit of vulnerability. Right. By saying, you know what? I love this man. I'm going to do this. Then this happens. How does she ever trust again? How do you go through? I'm looking at from my point of view. She's yeah. a very strong girl. She can probably do it. But as of like as a, I'm looking at from in her shoes, like she took all this time and finally said, OK, I'll do this for him and then gets let down like this and then. How do you go back out there and be like, I have to trust again. I have to, you know. So getting back to what anyway, you were hinting I just, at. That's, in, that's, I have a hard time with that. In your opinion, your opinion, you think, and we see hints from the reunion, you think that there were several random indiscretions on Tom Sandoval's part throughout the nine years. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I do believe that. I do. I mean, I mean, I believe it too. I mean, I'm sure it's very easy. I mean, yeah. a lot of girls, 
are I mean, very happy to hook up with someone and have no strings attached, especially when it's like a good looking guy that they watch on the show. And Tom is and very like, he comes home t- four o'clock in the morning every, you know, every night. The guy can't just sit home and watch a movie. Like I'm a homebody. I, I don't like leaving my house. I like to sit home and watch TV with my wife. We have movie nights. Like he can't do that. Like he can't just sit at home and watch a movie. He has to be out. He has to be drinking. He has to come home at three or four in the morning. And mind you, as Ariana, right? She's sitting and she's a homebody. She's like, you know, me and Brittany, she likes to stay home and watch movies. So mind you, she's getting Tom when she, he comes home at four or five at night, drunk as can be, that has to be miserable for her every night. You know, he's like, well, I have this time. I do come home. She's like, yeah, you come home at four or five in the morning and you're a hot mess stinking like cigarettes and beer. Well, like, who even wants when that? he starts to like switch around, people were dying that she, that he was saying, oh, I run the house and she, um, I make sure there's batteries and pens in the drawers and she doesn't check on the toilet paper or whatever. That this was, is, this is so, that's so like, what, that's the stuff you argue about when you're a child. Like, I mean, this it's stuff, so like, ridiculous. I, no, the best part is I'm working on our love. I go out and get her lattes. <laughs> I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I work on our love. I go get lattes every morning. Like, oh you do my kind of, God. You do a pretty good impression of him. He's just so like, because he's so dramatic. <laughs> yeah, he's you so do. dramatic. Like, yeah. Ariana, you don't know. You don't know what I've been going through. You don't know. Like, it's just like, dude, enough with the act. You're a grown man. Like, you're a grown man at this point. Who, well, you're supposed to be a grown man. That You know, you own a home together. You're this. And you're playing this, like, you're acting. And then also, she, he, she goes something like, he goes, she goes, well, will you watch Blind Date or Love Island or whatever? And he goes, no, that's your thing with, you know, you do that with other people. She's like, with Logan? Aren't they talking about Logan, the gay friend? Of, yeah, that's like, her best friend. I, I yeah. love Logan. Yeah. And I'm like. So now you're going to try to give her shit that she's giving too much attention to her platonic gay friend over because you're you while not you're home? fucking her other best friend. Yeah. <laughs> like, she's not fucking Logan. Yeah. Like, I was just like, oh, my God. I mean, and honestly, that's like, that's relationship killer 101. Owning a bar and being in a band. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, have you ever met or heard of anybody in your entire life being faithful but, who owns a bar or in a band? In your does, life. And he does both. And does both. I mean, they're both, they're, it's a, D-list band and a D-list bar, but still, either way, it's still. I feel bad for Schwartz, by the way. I should. And say now, that. how do you feel about Schwartz? And I feel like he's like in the ringer. It's not weird relationship. It's so not fair what he's doing to Schwartz. He, you know what? The right thing would have been to do. Everybody knows the right thing. Tom should have said, "Hey, listen, and, and, and this is what the right thing to do." Tom, Use your when last he found names, out, otherwise it's too. Confusing. Sorry, Schwartz should have said, "Hey, listen, you told me this. Say it was Monday. I'm going to give you till Wednesday, and I'm going to say something because not only is this going to affect." you know, our friendship, but this is going to affect our business, our finances, like everything is going to, that's what should have happened. But then again, Tom's not his father. He's he, like, you put him between a rock and a hard place. Like, what is he supposed to do? He's friends with Ariana. He's friends with Tom, uh, Sandoval. Like, what is he supposed to do? Yeah. He should have came clean, but then it's like, I have a business to run. I got a million dollars tied up in this. Like, is it going to affect this? Like, and, the hey, guy, about- and Schwartz is already dealing with enough. He's got three brothers that are, are struggling with alcoholism. He's got his, his dad that's in the and out triplets. of the hospital. Yeah. He's got his dad that's in and out of the hospital. He's got his mother that lives, uh, you know, uh, in, in South Carolina when his other family's in Florida. I just think guy's dealing with enough already. Like, he's like, I don't know how he hasn't had like a, a stroke or a, a heart attack because he's dealing with that. And then he comes back to L.A. finding out that. Sandoval is cheating on Ariana. It's going to possibly affect his business that Tom Schwartz well, just put his you, life savings in. When do you think Schwartz found out, in uh, your opinion? I think he's known for a couple months. And I talk to him about it all the time. He's like, I've known. I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to ask you when you knew. It's like, this is, I feel like. Well, the but last. But he's like, I've known for a while. The, and he's The like, last episode that we saw, which was that the, they had the tasting first, and then they went back for Lisa's birthday. Right. That was like September, right? That's yeah. before BravoCon. Yeah. Now, there is, people said the reason they didn't go to the tasting is they found a photo. I saw someone pull up a photo of, because it was the same outfits of them and their like weird dumb and dumber outfits kind of. And he was with Joe, who he dates now, right? No, Schwartz. he's not dating her. Okay, well, he was dating her for a minute, yeah, right? Yeah, that's a whole other story. She showed up the other night and we're like, what is she doing here? We were at... <laughs> That's Joe a was a story. friend of Kristen's too. Yeah, she's weird. She is weird. And like, then became she's his like roommate. Kristen on crack. That's what she is. That's what I call her. You're Kristen 2.0. Circa 2010. Yeah. And she and she had written Katie like a really nice note after that Katie and Schwartz broke up. And and Katie shared it somewhere on her stories or whatever, being like, I'm for you, I'm on your side, whatever. 
Then Joe moves in to the other bedroom of the two bedroom apartment. Because right, Tom can't with be Tom alone. Troy. Right. And then it appears that they, I guess, dated for a minute. But they, it was Joe uh, Schwartz, Sandoval, and Raquel all went to this other guy's event before going to Sir. And that's why they didn't go to the tasting. So people are like, they were on a double date. There was also. They went uh, on a ski trip together. They all, Baker, uh, not Bakersfield. Um, Big Bear. Big Bear. They went to Big Bear. So that's a, that's more than a few months ago, Jax. That's that, like, like all that's, the way. So do you, right. did Schwartz know in September? I, I think he's known a lot longer than he's saying. I don't know the exact September dates. September was a really long time ago. I think he's, 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 he's known a lot longer than he's saying. But that, that whole trip to Big Bear, being out in the public like that, holding hands with another girl when you're with her. Like people were going to see you. I guess they got caught out and they scammed out, ran out of some restaurants when people called them out. Yeah. I mean, what are you doing? And I'm, the fact that Schwartz went along with this was kind of was weird to me. I'm like, dude, you're you're allowing this to happen. You're kind of well, enabling it. Well, you know when when that great scene where they were in drag? Did you get in drag too for that event? <sighs> don't get me started on that. I will get you started on it. What the? Who the fuck I don't know why idea I allowed that. that? I, who do you think's idea? <laughs> Who's, whose idea is it for all this crazy shit that we do? Sandoval? Yes. So He's he the just... only one that ever wants to do the drag thing. And I'm like... Uh. <laughs> Gee, I'm like, why, why, why do we always have to dress up every? No matter what we do, if we go get ice cream, let's dress up and drag. Like, we don't need to dress up and drag. We're going to get ice cream. <laughs> like, you know, we're going to Blockbuster. You want to dress up and drag? No, we're going to get a video. Like, it's always the drag thing with him. Which I, how long has the drag thing been going on? For? Been going on for a very, very long time before the show. Be now, honestly. one of the there are the other questions. Yeah, I'm not getting into that. I know where you're going with this. I mean, I'm not going to say because I don't know, and it's to each his own. So whatever his sexual fluidity might be, could be a little more fluid than we know. Let's just say that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you guys get, have to get in drag, and that was for was that Schwartz's bachelorette party? What was that for? Which one? My bachelorette party? You know, his bachelorette no, the party? One where they're where they where he's it was a, a random Sunday. Yeah, the one where <laughs> Scandal. <laughs> Is half drag like the wig is off, but the, he still has like a wig cap, and he's crying. Oh, that's the bachelorette party. That's okay. Tom Schwartz's bachelorette okay, party, which was a nightmare, fight, by the way. And he and Kate are fighting, and he goes, "Look at him! Look at Schwartz! He's like a fucking battered wife." Yeah. In that all was in, New Orleans. in over analyzing all this and going back, I believe Schwartz is a battered wife. Yeah. But Sandoval's the battering husband. 100%. And Schwartz is very easily manipulated. He's very easily talked into things. I feel like, and I talked to Schwartz the other day about this. I'm like, you know, I'm not going to get in this. I'm like, you're getting it. You're my friend. I haven't seen him in a while. And I say, hey, let's go have a drink. Let's go, whatever. And we went back to his apartment and uh, we were just talking. I go, hey, listen, I'm not going to tell you how to run your life. You're your grown ass man, but you got you to gotta cut the ties, dude. You got to cut the umbilical cord with, with Sandoval. He is doing nothing but bringing you down and you do not deserve this. You're a good guy. People are seeing you now and calling you names and you're getting dragged through the mud and you literally have done nothing wrong. Should you have said something sooner? Absolutely. But should have, would have, could have. You know what I'm saying? You were between a rock and a hard place. It wasn't your place, I don't think. It was his place. He should have said. He literally told everybody but Ariana. I think Kyle Chan knew. I think a bunch of people knew. Who's Kyle Chan? The, the jewelry oh, the guy. guy. That, the jewelry oh, guy. And that's whose event they were at. Yeah, I mean, I think he's told a lot of people. He, like, you should have just told Ariana and stopped telling everybody well, else. Did the did the Chan guy give uh, give the uh, the lightning bolt necklaces? And then we see that she buys the lightning bolt necklace. Yeah, where did she get eight hundred dollars from? Why, why are there rumors that she's worth thirty million on the internet? Have you seen that? Thirty million? Yeah, there. Like, if you look up her net worth, did you see her apartment? I don't think no, she's there's no way. In thir- no. I don't think she's worth thirty million. Th- th- that's why when people bring that up, I'm like, that has been mm. debunked. That's like a weird. Like urban myth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's that's um, not true at all. Okay. I hope she's getting the help that she needs, though. I mean, if, if that's the case, if, if people again, I don't really know what's going on with her personally, but if it is a, a mental health situation, and I hope she's not just going to a hotel and quote unquote saying that I'm in a mental health. Uh, yeah, that's what I've heard too. That she's just staying in a hotel and telling people that she's got mental health problems, and she's also using other people's. Other women who do struggle with mental health, she's saying, I agree and I understand. She's kind of using this as a, a scapegoat. I hope that's not the case. I hope if she does have something that she really is getting help and not just using this as a, ooh, this could be a way out. You know what I'm saying? In Schwartz's defense of what keeping his mouth shut so, for so long, I think that, don't you think that Sandoval probably said to him, look, the plan is 
we're de- we're going to be done with filming soon. We'll do the reunion. Then on the break, you know, on the hiatus, I will break up with Ariana. And, you know, and then when I start dating Raquel, no one will know, you know, that we dated before. Do you, do you, think, think, you think that's how it went? I think that's what he told Schwartz to keep Schwartz quiet. Because he's like, look, if we, you know, if, if we can't find out now, like, it'll be more hurtful, like, to find out on camera or whatever. Let us break, let, it, let me break up with her not on camera when we're on hiatus. That will be less painful to for Ariana. So you just keep your mouth shut. That's what I think he told Schwartz. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I could see that. I could see that. I can see, like I said, uh, Sandoval manipulates the hell out of Schwartz. That is a fact. Mm-hmm. He will do whatever he says. And that's why I said, you got to cut ties. This is not make, making any situation easier. I, this is not healthy for you, for anybody. Like this is. Yeah, but if he cuts ties, I mean. The re- he has to cut ties. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, have, like they're, they're going gonna to lose the bar. They're going to lose the everything. People are going to the restaurant. People are saying it's like packed. I went there Thursday night. There was five people there. Uh-huh. And this was 1030 at night. There was five people there. Oh. And the bar manager, the owner, they can't stand Sandoval. They don't want him there anymore. They want to buy him out. This is all. I'm hearing this. This is all people things are saying. So, okay, let me ask. So, so I, again, and it's not cheap to have a bar in LA. You got oh rents, you got overhead, I mean, you got that's employees. Why, I mean, I understand. How are you footing the bill for this? Who's paying for this? And then I know, I also know that he borrowed, Tom Sandoval borrowed like 200 grand from his mom, his her retirement fund. So you, like knowing this in the back of your head, you have all this money tied up and all this, knowing that this could jeopardize your business, your mom's financial status, your best friend's financial status, and you still decided to do this well i mean i think it's the ultimate narcissistic move it's thinking, uh, hey listen it's can thinking, i make it very clear yes. by the way i have no leg to stand on when it comes to being an asshole i've made my fair share of mistakes i you know i i've cheated as well i think the difference is is the way he went about this and the way his lack of empathy and just the whole affair thing you know like i said everybody on the show has, has cheated or done something wrong it was silly and it was you know whatever but it's never gone like to this and i think that's kind of why it's gone on so long do you think because i'm so, trying to I mean, i'm trying think, to wrap my head around okay, the fact like, that okay. why this has gotten so big. asking you a, a guy who's a recovering scumbag yes <laughs> when you do cheat on a girlfriend and your cheatings the worst that were, featured I ever made. were essentially one night stand type of things yeah so when you're entering that moment of i'm going to have i'm going to sleep with this other person and i have this girlfriend at home and i've had a few drinks how does a guy like you how do you justify it in your brain? How do you compartmentalize? Well, I can tell you how I was. Okay. I was I was going through hell at that time. You know, I was going through just some personal demons and I was insecure as all hell. I hated who I was. I, you know, living in this life out here, am I good enough? Am I still good enough? Do I, you know, I just didn't like the person I was. And it had nothing to do with the person who I hooked up with at the time. And I'm not going to say who it was. It could have been a hole in the wall. It didn't matter who it was. It was just whoever was you know, there. And it just, and, and I knew going in, this is, this is a bad, but I just, I hated myself at the time. You know, I, as you guys know, I've been on the show. I've been to therapy millions of times. Nothing worked. I just didn't like who I was. And again, I was just a very self-destructive person. And I thank God, thank God that my now wife is just an amazing woman and, and just stuck by me and said, listen, you know, I know you didn't do this just to hurt me. This is something that you're going through and we're going to get through this together. And, you know, I think we fixed it. And, you know, I, it didn't just happen overnight. I had to work my ass off to get my wife back, work my ass off, you know, and I didn't like who I was at the time. Let's just make it very well, clear. I've, I didn't like, I've who often I was. said, and I was insecure. I was very insecure. And it was like, I, I didn't, I was just going through a lot of things personally. I'm not trying to justify it, but people ask why you did what you did. No. And I'm telling you the reasons why I did what I did. And I, I just didn't like myself. And like I said, I, I had a, I have a very strong, strong woman in my corner, like very, very strong. And she saw the bigger picture and she knew this is not him. He's going through something. And she's like, we're going to work on this, but I'm going to make his ass work for it. And she did. And she did. And I, I mean, mean, I think, I think in, in your case and, and in many guys, and I've said this before, it, it isn't about the girl your partner that you're cheating on. And oftentimes it's not the girl that you're having the indiscretion with. It is your own insecurity and your ego boost. Someone right. strokes your ego. Mm-hmm. And at that time you're insecure enough that you need it. You need, you take it. Right. And it's, it is really about you. And right. you know, and oftentimes with girls that are the one like, 
sleeping with the guy who's connected to someone they know, whether it's personal or famous. That oftentimes the girl is kind of obsessed with, I mean, whether you're watching Fatal Attraction or whatever, where someone wants the life that this other woman has, it's not even about the guy. It's like, ooh, exactly. you know, like I fucked, you know, back in the day, I fucked Lamar Odom. You know, he, he, he was fucking me and he's married to a Kardashian. That makes me like one step closer to it. Yeah. You know, and I think there I is, there's that. And then add an element of the fame and like with, Raquel, and I don't know if she even went this deep. There's, but there's, it's not only she, her ego, if we're going to talk about Raquel, her ego was getting boosted by Tom wanting to be with her. But then also being friends with, with Ariana, like being that's, like, that's wow, here's off. this prettier, sexy, more mature, more like been on the show forever girl. Right. Yeah. No, to say. And, and no, not to, I think that's what the, the fact that Ariana and Raquel were so close and were friends and like, she was sleeping over at their house in her bed for so long and the sleepovers and the skinny dipping and the hot tubs. Like it went to a whole different level. It wasn't just a, you know, a little thing here. This was yeah. like a whole going on for so long. And I think obviously that's why this is put everything else that's happened on Vanderpump Rules on the back burner because this is pretty intense and it's pretty, I mean, I got to say with the way social media is nowadays and everything, the fact that they kept it a secret for so long, as you know, it's impossible. I think it's impossible to cheat nowadays. It's impossible. It's well, I think it's for the same reason that even, you know, even though Lala on the show had moments on camera where she's like, I think things are up. I mean, you know, she the season ended and nothing was exposed about the affair. And that's she, because they never talked about it. Even this going around the show, Sandoval was very like, I'm not talking about my relationship. He would never talk about it. And I had never talked about he and okay, Ariana. You mean. Yeah. He never talked about he and Ariana. And I had arguments about this off camera with production. This is bullshit. We're on a reality show together. He always gets away with not talking about his personal things. He can always just scapegoat it and go into everybody else's and tell everybody else how to act. But he never dove into the relationship. And I said this many, many times. He never got into him. In Ariana's relationship, he would always just go right over that, go right over it. Like, oh, we're perfect. We're perfect. We're perfect. And always just go into everybody else's. And I said this for years that this is, this shit's not fair. We're all in this together. We're all making X amount of dollars. You need to put in the work too. It's not fair. And I, I always say that too about a reality show. When someone shares everything, right. their cracks, their therapy, their fucked up, you know, family, whatever. And then someone doesn't. The reason why it does make people like you that exposed every bad thing about yourself on the show why it would make you resentful i'm like it's like if you all worked out a factory and you're working from eight to seven and tom sandoval is leaving at noon right exactly. and not coming back after lunch exactly that's why people are like that's why people then sometimes want to call out that person on the show to, and why they get resentful and i think it's they are fair. now i think yeah. they finally finally are and everyone's like are you having this redemption moment and i i i of course i i smile a little bit a little bit more because of what's going on because I, for so long, I was always looked as the bad guy because they would just go, you know, I don't want to say ride my coattails, but no matter what they have done, I would trump that no matter what I did, it would always be talked about and magnified. You know what I'm saying? No matter, you know, what was going on in the show, if they did something wrong, it wasn't talked about as much as compared to what I did. So I think the fact that when now I'm not on the show anymore, now all this stuff's being exposed and yeah. that's what I think. And you went and he did end up going to your wedding, right? But he yeah, wasn't in it, or got, he wasn't. I in. got forced into that. That was not. That was not my choice. My wife sat me aside and goes, "Listen, you will regret this if you don't have him." And I, and I was just like, "I don't. I don't want him there." But I couldn't have Ariana there if I didn't have Tom there. And, yeah. and Brittany was like, "I really want Ariana there." So if you have Ariana there, then you have to have Tom. So I'm like, "This is my wife's wedding. This is her wedding, and I want her to be very, very happy." So I'm just gonna, you know, bite the bullet. And do you think at that time Tom Sandoval knew that you? there was no coming back that you knew who he was or do you think he thought oh he'll get over this and we'll be buddies again yeah i think he'll just like yeah he's typical jacks he'll just you know sweep it under the rug mm -hmm. and, and you know and for my wife and to make her happy i did what i needed to do and, and i invited him you know like you know what was the point i just make yeah. i just want my wife to be happy and i want ariana to be at the wedding because i liked ariana i just didn't want him there i just i just he's a he's a slime he's just he's like what he was james call him a worm he's a worm a snake He's just very, con like, he's just very manipulative. And so after the wedding, did you guys ever really no, hang? No, no, no. And if the show was to come back um, and invite you to be back on as a regular, 
would you film with him? It's a million dollar question. I don't know. I mean, that's what I, I think. I'm like, I got to I... discuss it with people. Uh, if it were to happen, I would have to discuss it. And if, if it would make sense, um, I, I'm in a, such a different place right now. Yeah. I'm so happy. I have a beautiful wife. I have a beautiful child. Uh, you know, we're just so good right now. And like, things are so great. I don't, I don't know if I want to disrupt that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I haven't felt this good about myself. And so, I'm going to get emotional about this. I haven't felt this good about myself in so long. I haven't. I've always had these demons on my shoulder all the time. And I just, I feel so good about myself. And it's so, it's just refreshing. It's a great feeling, you know? And like I said, it's, it's, I'm not having my aha moment. I just, I just feel good. And like, so if I dive back into this, I have to make sure that it makes sense for me, my family, um, my friends, you know, I had to repair a lot of friendships, Lala, Sheena, Ariana, uh, Schwartz, Katie, stop. I mean, I have to repair, I had to repair a lot of damage that I've done over the years. So, and I'm finally at a place where I'm like 95% there. There's still a couple people that I need to smooth over a little bit. Uh, <coughs> Stassi Bo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but other than that, um, I, I, I'm just in a really good place. So if I were, I'm not saying I am to come back to the show, I would have to discuss it with my friends and my family first. And if they thought it was a good idea, then okay. But it would have that's what the way I'd have to deal with that. Yeah. If that makes sense. What do you think? No, I mean it totally makes sense. And I mean like as someone who watches a show and someone who's real what I think makes this show so interesting and always has been is that you guys are real friends, yeah. you have real history. But I, you know, I do believe that people can reflect and change. And I find it's like, psychologically, this show is extremely intriguing. Like this could be a college course. Like this, I, <laughs> I will not be surprised if like in communications and social, sociology classes in the future, people will reference this like a time 100%. in history that we could actually watch it happen and watch the relationships and everything. Um, I mean, I talked at colleges about this yeah. already. Like I, over the, in the past, I've gone to colleges and there people ask questions. How does this work? Why is your show so successful? Why is your show better than everybody else's show? And I have one word. It's, it's organic. The, this wasn't a casted show. This wasn't Susie. I need you to make out with Jeff. Jeff, you need to cheat on um, Kathy. Kathy, you need to be best friends with her, but you got to pretend like you got this show already. Or even existed. that they do a casting of like, we want to do a show about a bunch of waiters yeah. and we want to make sure that there's, one person from this part of town, one person that's this sexuality, one person that, you know, like they didn't, you guys were actually friends, which made it so brilliant. And when they start to alter that, yeah. which they have started to do a little bit on Vanderpump Rules, they start adding people that aren't necessarily friends because you see like people aren't stupid. Fans of the show love the show. They know when the, when the taping's over, everyone's at my house. They still are. My house is the central location where everybody goes. And then you're like, well, how come this person's not there? Well, how come this person's on the show, but they're not over? Because they have to, because the show's been on so long that sometimes they have to add other people. Right. And there's new people that are going to come into the group, such as Allie, by the way, James' new girlfriend, Allie. I think she's a sweetheart. I think she's a yeah, beautiful she's person. Yeah, she's very likable. But there is some people that are like on that are like, what is she doing there? Well, you know, you know, or, well, yeah. like, no I'm not going to say names. I'm not, no offense to Charlie. Okay. That's like, she's a cute girl, but I don't but understand li but literally it. literally when she was buying, never seen her once in my life, buying the necklace, it took me a minute and I go, wait a minute. That's not Allie. Who yeah. The fuck is? Like, exactly. I forgot because also, Hey, she wasn't involved in the storyline either. So right. when they were editing, there was nothing that happened with her. It's not her fault. Right. I'm sure she's like a, a cool person. Oh, I'm sure she is. But like, it just doesn't really make sense in the show. It doesn't. That, it doesn't. And that's why she's not featured as much, you know, because, you know, you, yeah. I just think for being on the show for so long, the show's gone so long, people, real people know who's friends and who's not. So when yeah. you throw in like just a random person, you're like, this isn't real. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and speaking of which, do you think Billy Lee, who was only on for a short period of time, ever hooked up with Sandoval. Sheena believes so. Yes. Sheena said yes. Okay, then I'll Sheena say yes. Sheena said it on her show. Yeah, okay. On her podcast. Yeah. I, I, in my, if you're asking my opinion, yes, I do. Yes, 100%. And so recently they showed her leaving his place. Saw that. Do you think she called the paparazzi or do you think she stayed and <sighs> two things could be true at the same time? You know, time? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past her, but again, yeah. I don't, I don't know her that well, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, this, 
they're all a sneaky bunch, man. They really, really are. I don't know what's going on. I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 you think it'll come out? It'll eventually come out. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But do I do? Uh, yes, I think they hooked up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? I mean, I kind of think so. I mean, I think there was chemistry and a friendship. And I mean, I just, I think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if in, if show comes back, Sandoval's still on it. It will be, I'm a sex addict. Curious, like. It, and that'll be the next thing that he kind of explores in therapy or whatever. Does he have some type of. You know, why does he do the things he do, does, which could be really interesting for people at home. If you, if we like really went through it, I don't it, think sort he's a explored. sex addict. I think he's an attention addict. Like, no, he maybe. Needs, yeah. I think That's he part needs of a too. lot of attention. Like, he needs the focus to be on him. He needs to be the life of the party. He needs to be putting on the biggest show. He needs to, like, he needs that. That, that That's his drug. Yeah. The choice is, is attention. I don't know if it's, if it's sex per se or if it's just, or controlling. He can control Raquel. He's very, Ariana, you can't control. She's a very strong individual. She will not be told what to do. Raquel, you can tell her to do anything. She'll do it. Especially now you have Tom telling do you, her. Do you think there's any chance that they will continue to see each other and date? And That's be a great question. I don't, I don't know. I mean, in the, you know what? Now I'm watching it too. And now he's doing these concerts and kind of poking. It's really yeah, disturbing. He, okay, so poking I. Poking fun and saying, Raquel is not for me. Yeah. And like, dude, you're disgusting. That's disturbing. Like you've already, you've already, you've already laid the ground for what you've done. Now you're just digging it deeper. Like you're poking fun of the fact that you did this for so long against Ariana. My you, Ariana's doing fine and she looks super happier, but still like, you're still like digging at it and like poking fun of something so personal. Like you're, you're singing about it and then adding your best friend's name in it. Like that is where it's starting to get. Now it's like, dude, you need help. You need help now. Yeah. Like. It's gone one far. Now you're taking it such a step further that now it's like getting part to like, well, you're making fun and you're trying to make a buck off this. You're right. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, you're trying to keep it going maybe. I don't know. But what do you think? Don't you think that's really disturbing to throw her in this, change the lyrics of a song and Raquel is not and, for and me. And he had the lightning bolts on either side. I'm like, listen, I think now he has come to the place where like. Do you think he's starting to lose it? I think he's starting to lose it in a sense, but I also think he's like, now let me take the lemons and make my own lemonade. And now let me try to profit off okay. this because everyone's so obsessed with it. And if I say, I mean, it was kind of smart because if he said it, then that went viral. That little video went viral. I saw it. People talk about it. And even though, you know, people are like, the show sucks and whatever, there's enough interest that people might go, let's fucking just go for the fuck of it. Like there might be some, you know, Bravo fans that, and that's- But the tickets are free now, right? So basically well, they buy some... one, get one free or- I mean, it's not, it's are, not they, are people going? I don't know. I don't know. But listen, I know as a stand up and sometimes when I do my live juicy scoops and I get, you know, if I bring a couple more people, it's more, ex I make less. Right. If it's just me alone, he's got a whole band. It can, that's why he's probably having financial trouble. It, even, even it's a like, nine person band. Right. Do you Venmo it, everybody? No, exactly. I mean, when, even when Luann started her cabaret thing, she had a lot more people. Now she's tapered it down. You have to think about how you have all the travel, and then you have bands, and uh, like I just Travel, have a mic. Hotels, I mean, it's yeah, it's a lot. Lighting, this and that, and yeah, I I don't I don't know I don't know how I, how it works. I, I I don't. I mean, I, it's probably not profitable, but he's gonna con he's gonna you know see out these dates. So I don't know. So it'll be you know really um, crazy to see. Now we're gonna play the dog. Okay, about Randall. Is this the pre? Uh... The, uh, this was the craziest story. Outrageous. Devastating. Insane. Randall Emmett is sketch at best. Oh, Randall Emmett. Hollywood movie producer. Lola Kent. Reality star. Vanderpump Rules. Hollywood. The lifestyle. The Rolls Royces. The Jets. He paid so much just to have status. Hollywood. Vanderpump Rules. It's about these young, hot 20-somethings. This is the juiciest time in reality show history. How could I not have been smarter? Like, I beat myself up daily. How is my daughter having to pay for my stupidity and me keeping my blinders on and not wanting to see red flags? The Randall Scandal. Love, loathing, and Vanderpump. Wow. 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 Holy cow.
So, I mean, well, do you, you want to hear my side yes, of the story on this? I definitely want to hear your side. Well, he owes me money. I make it very clear on my podcast, and I'm going to keep making it very clear on my podcast. He owes me $75,000, and I'm going to explain to you why he owes me $75,000. I was doing bridge loans with uh, Randall before COVID. You know, I would invest some money, and then he'd promise me certain back. And it was working out for the first three movies. Everything was fine. Then the last movie I did, I invested um, $100,000. Uh, COVID happened. Movie didn't happen. Okay, no problem. Can I have my money back? And I'll reinvest again when COVID's over. Um, I don't have the money right now. It's not, well, why don't you have the money if there's no movie happening? I don't know. I'll call you back and this and that. And then this, this started happening. Now I am not a, I am not a studio. I'm not Disney. I'm not Paramount. I am a family guy that has a mortgage that has a family that has to put food on the table. So this is a big deal to me. These studios can recoup that. They don't care. hundred grand is nothing to them. I'm a family guy and I'm your friend. I'm the only one, the only one that has stood by you through all this crap. When Lala like wasn't going to be my friend anymore, when nobody was going to talk to me anymore because I was friends with you, Randall, because I thought you were a nice guy. You were nice to me and we were making money together. And I was, I thought, okay, this is, this is okay. But then, you know, and all these, I, I would get hit up all the time by LA times, all these people. Do you want to do a story on Randall? Did you hear about Randall? People telling me, do not invest with Randall. Do not. I didn't get my money back. Multiple people. There's another one that just came out last week. Another guy, I can't say his name, from Miami said he's delinquent and paying me now. And this was last week. And I'm like, you know, people, you know, they told me and I didn't listen, but I, I thought I saw a good human being in there somewhere. I don't know how because... <laughs> But I just thought, you know, this is another way of making some extra income, you know, and, and to pay my bills and, and I got screwed. He hasn't paid me back yet. And he's doing another movie and he's, and he's like, well, I'll pay you on the next movie. Well, you're on movie number two and I haven't seen a check. And every time now his lawyer won't get back to my lawyer. And it's just, it's just a mess. Like just pay me what you owe. You're taking from a family guy. Like I'm trying to pay my mortgage. I ain't trying to go buy planes and buy cars. I'm trying to put food on the table. You know, make a little extra money so my kid can go to kid can go to college, like stuff like that. Like, I just don't get it. So, where you, did the money go? Right. So, you guys met as I did through social stuff. Right. But you, at the foursome, you guys hung out a lot. Right. You and and had a lot of fun and everything. And I remember when we hung out that night and uh, went to the Coachella party. Right. That was really fun. And you were like, "No, we're looking at property yeah. together out here and everything." So when you first heard about the photo of him walking across the street with the girls, did you think for sure he's cheating? Because I didn't. I actually thought this is just someone got a photo of him walking across with some girls. Like, you know, you but know, then all of a sudden it was just like all of a sudden it all came out after that. But prior to that, I thought, no, this is just, you know people wanting to be insert themselves in this story. I think so too. I don't know what we're allowed to say, what we're not allowed to say, especially with him owing me money. I don't want to get myself in trouble here because okay. I'm trying to like, I'm just trying to recoup my money here. Yeah. Um, but you know, I was wrong. I was a hundred percent wrong. I trusted the wrong person. I thought, you know, we had a good business deal going. And like I said, it was working for a while. And like I said, I don't know what he did with my money. I don't know what he's done with anybody's money. I don't know where it went. It might be in his house. I think he over, overspends and tries to live out of his means, um, you know, to look cool, I guess. I don't, I don't know, but it's just really disturbing, you know, especially you have daughters, you have three daughters and guess what? The internet is never going to go away. They are going to read this one day. They are going to see this. You're going to have to explain yourself one day, just like I'm going to have to explain myself one day. But you know, I, I just well, don't know, know how I, I, I'm just remembering a story that happened. So he, I was, um, seeing, Something come. Someone let me know that uh, this this girl that has a podcast too, Dana. She was twenty five thousand dollars sunglasses from Beverly Hills. Anyway, she started to, now. She has a podcast, but at the time she was just spewing on Instagram, and she was saying Randall owed her five thousand dollars from many years ago. And anyway, then she came on my show, and he saw that she was coming on my show, and he, and this is when everybody's good. Like right. we're at, Lala's in love with them. There's. I don't know if it was before or after COVID, but I was planning on going to the wedding. Okay. So something was, you know, and, and I go, I go, listen, I did talk to her. I did not put it on the show, but can you give her her 5,000 back? Yeah. You do owe her from this thing that she did. It was a Cannes Film Festival thing that, you know, he promised that he would get this room on a yacht and then like, just, just blew her off. But then also said, um, okay, I've got your money. 
come to the office, did a run around to get oh, the money. That's how I got my first portion. I had to do the run around. Meet me here. Then we get there. Meet me there. No, meet me there. No, meet me here. Now I don't have the money. Come to my house. Like every time I was going out, I was it was a it was a cat and mouse game. And that, chasing me around. And I was like, that's kind of shitty, like the run around. And I go, I'm gonna put you together. And you know, if you give her the money, like she's never gonna talk about it. I'm never gonna talk about it. Right. She's not rolling in and she would like the money. Right. So he did. And that was that. She went on to do her thing. We never talked about it. So then when all this stuff started to happen, you know, I was like, wow. And then there was a Megan Weaver story. Megan Weaver and, and Jeff Lewis uh, in, did interior design for his home and he owed her money. And not until she talked about it, I think on Jeff Lewis finally, then, then they got the money. But it was still not the full amount that she was supposed to get. And it was like, okay, so, okay, some people, you know, it's not cool. When someone has a pattern like that, but yeah. it is a pattern. It's like, and I'm, it's, Hey, I'm just as to blame. I'm the idiot that didn't do my research. And I was, the, I'm the sucker that said, you know what? He wouldn't do that to me. He's never done that to me. And then he did it to me. <laughs> but I mean, he, he is so charming and he is like, and that's what it is. It's charming and fun and, and you know, and great and all that. Yeah. So but it's I'm like, not, like I said, he borrows mostly from studios and, you know, multimillionaires. I just thought, Hey, this is maybe a nice way to make some extra money while, you know, I've looked for my next thing and he promised me this and he's, he goes, my mom's doing it too. You're going to be on the same scale as my mom and this and that. So I was like, okay, I mean, he's not gonna do this to me. I, I think we're really close friends. We go out to dinner, you know, he tells me a lot of things and I just thought, I guess I thought wrong. I was just an idiot. Like everybody else. I just, I believed him and I thought. So when, when it broke and, and Lala was no longer with him. Yeah. You still had this business going on. Yeah, so that you're was like, hard. so you're like, okay, well, let me just like roll this a little bit longer. I know. And I was like, Lala, I'm sorry. Obviously, I have to finish this because he, and Lala's like, you're never going to get your money back. That guy owes everybody and in, in, in their brother right now. And I'm like, I have to try. I go, I have to try. I go, I feel like he's, he knows me a little bit better than that. I'm not a studio. I'm his friend. I'm the guy that he would call in the middle of the night when he has problems. I thought, we were closer. I just, I just, I don't know. I guess I'm, a, I'm just an idiot. I'm an idiot because I thought we were friends. I really did. I also think he's one of those people that makes several people feel like they're that person that yeah. calls them all day. Because he was calling me. Just after calling the, the, Hey, what do you think after, I should do? Do you think the, I should do this? Yeah. I look up to you. I'm like, you look up to me? It made me feel good. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I haven't heard of, you're older than I am. And you're a fan. I just thought that was really cool for him to. Right. And I was falling into his manipulation. I was like, okay, all right. He's like, okay, I'll, I'll get you this next month. And it made me feel good. So I'm like, okay, I bought him some more time. Hey, you want to put me in? You, and what he does is he puts you in a movie and then, okay, that buys him more time. So he doesn't have to pay you back. And that's what he was doing. Did you get put in some movies? Oh, yeah. I got put in, a, I got put in a couple of them. And he was like, you know, he's like, okay. He's like, well, okay, this will buy me some time. So I don't have to pay him for another month. But I never got paid from any of those movies either. So. Are you going to pay to act no, in them? no, no. <laughs> I was supposed to, never did. Oh, they no. They didn't turn in the paperwork to SAG or whatever. There was some BS reason, and I was just kind of like. Just the runaround. It was just, just the runaround. Just add it, to this, add it to the list of BS things you've done to me. I'm like, how do you do this to somebody? Especially who's like a guy who's like has a family and, you know, putting, you know, that's, that's the part I have a problem with. Like I said, people do it to studios all the time. But you do it to your friend, like your actual friend who you call in the middle of the night when you have a problem. Like you are just a, that's a bad person. I hope you get your money back. Me too. I hope because you're, you Me know, too. saying it publicly, you have jumped to the top of the list. Um, I just don't know what else to do anymore. Like I don't no, know, you, you know, it's not like it's twenty grand. It's or no. even that, even it is. It's money, you know. It's and it's like what you know. You're not going to keep the secret. I'm not going to keep the secret yeah, anymore. And like no. I told him that. I go, listen, Randall. Like you know, people are coming to me. I, I told him this. I go, L.A. Times is coming to me. This Hulu documentary is coming. Everyone's coming to me to talk. And I go, just pay me the money, and then I'll go away. Okay. He's like, well, you got to talk to my lawyer. Now my lawyer talks to his lawyer. Now his lawyer is ghosting mine. So it's just kind of But again, like, why do you have to talk to his lawyer? Like, why does yeah, the so lawyer you're going to pay more involved? money? Basically, instead of just paying it off, you got to go through another lawyer. Like, you have to pay these people. Lawyers want their money. They're going to come after it. So you're paying more money for this. Like, just, I think it was just, just, just the right a, thing. It was just, again, a runner. It was just to buy time. Everything and I know is, he's got the money. He's got the three or four cars that he's got. He's got the, you know, the house in Bel Air. So he's got it there. He's got it. It's not like he's. And he's got a new girlfriend that he's buying handbags for and going to Miami. Like, so it's not like he's like hurting by any means or he's, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that must be so frustrating. Yeah, and I know people it? see it and I know see, people see it on a non-public level and, and they just lent money to their friend and they just see their friend on Instagram. Exactly. Exactly. And you're like, 
you still owe me a grand, bitch. Like, yeah. I get it. Now on your scale, it's like, wow. $75,000. Wow. It's a lot of money. Yes, it is. You know, and I got 25. And like I said, it was a cat and mouse game to get that. You know, it's just the exhaustion of chasing. The exhaustion it. of chasing. I had Brittany in the car. He was like, meet me at this place. Meet me at Ralph's. Meet me at Gelson's. Meet me at the cafe. And then I get the check and it's scribbled and it's not right. And then I had to go to the bank and I had to redo it again because he, he, he put, did it scribbly so he, mm. nobody can know it. And I have to go uh. back and do it again. And I'm like, it was just like an all plan, all a plan, of course. Like, why, why, why? I don't understand. Like, it's the, this is why you have a bad name for yourself. It's like, the it's run not, around that I think is the rudest part of it all, really. You know, the wasting your time of like that because I'm like, I know. I mean, I, I've heard of what people do with that. You know, they they do the wrong Peter to pay Paul type oh, of thing. Yeah, or, or on the check, it's the you know the wrong the amount, wrong date the wrong or the wrong number. thing or that yeah the where they're like wow this is too much we can't do that can you just you know and it's like oh man God my stupid assistant da 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 yeah, you know yeah exactly let's talk about Croy and uh, Kim Zolciak. I know. Well, Croy Berman the Bermans are getting divorced. We know now that they both filed he in fact filed first then she filed but she probably alerted tmz so it looked like she did she had photographs of her picking up the kids they both want the kids mm. custody of the kids they seem so happy together on social media no well of course their whole i think what is really hard is when your whole livelihood especially them is about were this happy family they had the reality show about their happy family right and Oh, she was always doing the long diatribe of like how great he is and yeah. that he does everything for her and everything. Um, and then, of course, on top of it, too, overspending. And also part of their persona is being super luxury spenders. You know, their their persona was not let me show you the best deals at Costco. Their persona was the latest handbag, the Louis Vuitton luggage, the you know, everything. Yeah. I just saw a clip of where both she and the oldest girl are talking about how they spend now and now that the other girl, Ariana, is into um, getting her hair and makeup done. She's like, we spend, you know, four to eight thousand dollars a day on glam for the three of us. We all wear wigs now, which I'm like, why are two girls that don't have you know hair issues wearing a fucking seven thousand dollar wig to oh. go and do an Instagram post? Like, where do you go from there? Like when you start, your, your at that level, then. Where are you going to go? What are your thoughts on them? I just, to be honest, it, Kim's always been so kind to Brittany and I. Every time we see totally. her at a Bravo event, she's just like, I love you guys. She always seems like a real person to me. Again, yeah. I don't know what everybody else sees, but it, you know, she always, every time I do a post on Instagram, she messages me, love you guys. You guys look great. Uh, you know, when, when I heard that this came out, I messaged her, I hope everything's okay. You know, did think, she respond? Thinking about you. Yeah. She's like, thanks, sugar. So, it, it, you know, I, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. We don't. And I, I just see how she acts to me. I'm a very like face value person. If how you act to me is how I'm going to treat you. Yeah. And, like she's been course. nothing but kind to us, especially at all the Bravo cons and all that. She's the first one to be like, I love you both. Brittany's so great. She's so beautiful. You guys are so good together. She's just so kind and sweet to us. Um, I just hope the best for her. I, like I said, it, this was a shock when I did see this because of the persona they put on Instagram. Yeah. I just thought, man, this is a, great couple like he's always out in the backyard doing stuff kind of like me i was like wow okay this is i hope people don't think about this like uh, with well, us well i mean I, I definitely think both things are true i think they're both good parents yeah. i think all of that do you think so it seems like it's pretty it's amicable and, no it's not amicable oh, it's at not. all i thought no. maybe okay i thought this is what i'm thinking this is no. me out. from okay. what i see it's okay. a financial thing so there's that okay maybe we should split to mm. ease the pain or no i don't know i mean People, Do you think so, he's more mad at her or she's more mad at him? Okay, the first, fir the, everyone's speculating. They're like, is this fake? Is this to get on another show? Is it for her to have a well, show she's going back single? to the Housewives. That today, the latest article from a very close friend from page six says she is not at all thinking about going back to Housewives. They, um, she shared with friends months and months prior that she was thinking about leaving. Yes, the money stuff didn't help, but that's not the only reason. Right. And that there is no other guy because there was rumors that there was some guy in L.A., some rich, older, you know, big papa type guy. This person saying, no, that's not true. I don't think anybody knows but them. Right. But, um, you know, hopefully I, I can't imagine that you would do a fake divorce when you have four minor kids that are elementary age. Yeah. To get on TV. So I don't believe it's fake. I can't yeah. because you can't tell. Your four kids that are like in fourth and fifth and sixth grade, 
hey, if anyone asks you about our divorce, just say, hey, I'm sad. Yeah. Because mom and dad are actually getting back together and we're going to be a party for the party. Like, there's no way. I just no hope people are nice, are nice to the kids because, like I said, they're right. at that age where they're just kind of like, what is going on? Like, but they I'm don't saying, understand it. I just hope they're okay. When people think that it's fake, I'm like, I can't, you can't do that with four other people. If it was just the two of you. Right. Then maybe you could have a weird, like, cahoots. Right. You know, like, okay. Uh, like the Stallones, right? They said they were getting divorced. Uh, Sly Stallone and his wife, and it was like, wow, they're getting divorced after all these years. They have these three gorgeous daughters. Then it turns out, no, we're not getting divorced. And by the way, we have a reality show, and we filmed this. Okay, now you have three twenty-five-year-old daughters, whatever, that want to be the Kardashians. To them, you could go. We're gonna fake a divorce. We're gonna film this. Uh -huh. We're gonna act like Dad's really mad. Then he's gonna come back. This is going to get us PR and then the show is going to be a hit. Like you could say it to your 25 year old kids that this is like not hundred percent right, right. true. Don't freak out. Right. You can't, you can't fake this with like, that would be so cruel It'd to do cruel. to little kids. So I, uh, unfortunately it sounds like m this is not amicable, Oh, okay. but maybe, maybe there is a chance they could get back together, but I would say no. That's sad. Any any time people sad. go through divorces, it sucks, especially when there's kids involved. Especially, it, it especially is. being a parent now, yeah. I just you just want to protect your kids at all costs, you know. So I thought I you know watch everything on um, Housewives and all that and all your shows, and I just want to say about this show last night, Real Housewives of Atlanta, which I thought was great for the future of Bravo shows because I've been begging for it forever, and especially if you come back to Vanderpump and the future of Vanderpump. I have been saying, I just want to watch you guys live your next chapter. Whether, you know, you're launching something, you're working on this, whatever. You can still go to Sir and, like, have a meal right. or whatever. But, like, we don't have to pretend that all of a sudden Jax Taylor is going to go back to swing some, you know, shake some green. <laughs> I, I, and Brittany's going to pick up a hostess. I, I know. Okay, I, like, it's, we it's don't a little, need to see that. It's a little weird when people are showing up to surf for their shift driving $100,000 cars. Yes, and they live I, in a $3 million home. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, it's, that started to happen, like, towards, the, like, you know, before we got married, like, two seasons before we got married, people were starting to be like, come on. You know, because everyone's buying, yeah. buying homes and, like, this. And it was just hard to, like play yeah. the act anymore and like we couldn't even work anymore it was getting to the part it was just too crazy in the restaurants we couldn't even if we wanted to so right, it's like everyone's gonna be like i need a photo i at I... least had a bar in between myself and people the girls right. that are waiting tables are like right there so yes. it's like they can be touched grabbed whatever so yeah i agree with you 100 percent. we need to be able to break the fourth wall that's okay so what they did on the show about breaking the fourth wall which i thought was great is the girls were talking about how um they out said BravoCon. We saw each other at BravoCon. And then next week's episode, they're showing clips from BravoCon. Like some beef happens at BravoCon. We're going to actually see it, them talk about it on the show. And I'm like, I love that. Yes, I love so it So here's too. my idea, okay? You're welcome, Andy Cohen and Bravo. <laughs> okay, Jax comes back on the show. You guys go to BravoCon, but you don't stay at Caesars. You stay in some sick house. There's, you know, ask Josh Altman to find you a house, okay, to rent <laughs> for the day or rent for the weekend. And you guys all stay there and you bring your cameras there and we can film that, you know, and then we're not taking footage from Watch What Happens Live. They have their own footage. But you, we see what happened in Vegas while you guys are in BravoCon. It's a great idea. Thank you. That's a great idea. I'm fuck. I, I, That's a great idea. Because you have service. to find the next yes. thing because people are starting. We know you're starting... going to BravoCon. We know right. that you have launches and that you have businesses and you have clothing lines. And, and the like... Kardashians did that. After a while, yes. you kind of like, listen, you can't, you got to have to break that wall. People are not stupid. They're like, okay, yes. they're not doing this. Can we just actually see what they're doing? Because yes. we're, we're still going to watch. We're right. still going to watch. Regardless no, if it... they're slinging drinks or not, we're still going to watch. I, so not, let and... us show you what we're actually working on. Which, and as a yeah. reality show fan, I think it's be what than when the producer walks in with a you know with a COVID mask on and says, "Can I ask a question?" Yeah. And I'm like, "Yes." And he asked Candy about this like shooting that happened at one of her restaurants. He's like, "Hey, can we talk about this?" And I they're love like, when "They do that." They're like, "No, we can't because there's something legal going on." But they kept all that in, and I'm like, "That's juicy as fuck." Oh, like, I love when you know, like, during like, the, yes. the interviews, you know, the the, per, the confessionals when yes. the producers like says, "You know, Tom, did you really do?" Like, I love that because you're breaking that yeah. barrier. And I wish they would do more of that. I just think that's the next evolution yes. 
of the reality shows. Especially when a show's been on for six plus years, and seven plus years. And we want to stick with the people we know. Right. Like we, it's very hard to break like, you know, a whole new, you know, there's been other shows that have been like yours. Right. right? There's one now, I think too, I think, I think the producer of Vanderpump Rules left and started s- Southern Hospitality. There's, okay, so there's. Okay, there's a couple. They're, they're so, using the formula right. that Vanderpump used and they're trying to do it on. So, but the problem yeah. with that is, mm-hmm. the problem with that is you're taking people that aren't as good a core group of friends. You're right. casting. What they did is they go and they're like, who's working at a restaurant? She's pretty, she's pretty, he's good looking. This is, let's make a show. It won't work. And it didn't work. I watched a little of that. Couldn't get into it. I just watched this other show, Martha's Vineyard, where they basically do Summer House, but it seems to be all cast. They try to act like they're kind of yeah, friends. Yeah, and like and like people know they they'll they'll watch shows and like okay, we got to amp this up more. We got to be more mad than we should be. And like you don't have to do that. You can just just be who you are. It comes out organically. You don't have to be like you just met somebody and you're already starting a fight with her five minutes. Like come on, like. You're not starting. It's just, I think people just see these shows that are so su- successful and they're arguing and stuff goes on. People need to know that these people have been friends or in these shows for years. You don't need to jump out the gate and start an argument with Susie on episode one. Like it doesn't happen that well, way. Well, and it's, it's trying, you know, and it's trying to do that. Like, um, I'm going to go back. It's to very your... try hard. It's very well, forcing it. The, well, the I narrative. always, I always say like when friends was a hit, the actual show friends, Yeah, I was going out for auditions and stuff and I must've gone out on like six different pilots that was copycat of friends but instead of friends being in new york it was friends in seattle friends in alaska friends in san francisco do you remember any other show but friends no 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 it's so hard it's like it you, doesn't... you can't people try to copy the formula and it's like everything it's lightning in a bottle everything has to it's just like why a sitcom like everyone loves raymond is a hit forever it's because the writers all were best friends they all like actually when I did an episode of Frasier and I they were like, oh, we're on the lucky lot. And I go, what? We're, we're on the lucky um, studio. There was there was like one where like I love Lucy and Cheers and all this stuff. So they, they oh. got that. So they had that going just just Hollywood luck. But then I remember I'm waiting and I'm and I'm like, why isn't everyone in their dressing rooms? And they're like, oh, we don't have we don't have dressing rooms. This is literally the room was this big. This is where we hang out. And all the all the cast of Frasier's was hanging out talking about their weekends and what they're doing and they were all friends and then they would go do their thing they weren't all sitting in their trailer on their phone right being alone and the same thing is like the modern day sitcom is the Vanderpump you know or the Kardashian whatever and it has to be that that dynamic it has to be that you cannot just reenact it you can try and that's exactly what I talk about when I do these when I go to uh and do these talks about the show and how why it's so successful that's exactly the reason right there that's exactly the reason why it's successful because you took something that was pre-existing and you took something that's we're such a good group of friends already that nobody's acting this is who we are the cameras yeah. show up you turn them on and then we turn them off it's just we are who we are and it's just it's already all there it's organic it's not forced it's not okay we have to make this and this has to happen and this has to happen it just it just happens yeah and it's just there's no there's no forcefulness and it's just, it worked. It worked. Yeah. And you know, that's, I tell everybody that and the people that are at USC and in film school, why does your show work? Why is your show on for 10 plus years? And this show only lasted a year that because of that, because of the chemistry and the, yeah. and, and how organic everything is. And people just get so desperate. Like, well, we can make a show like that. It's a lot easier. You watch a show like we can do that. No, you can't. Yeah. You can't. You got to find something that's already there. So when I tell the cast, the people that are going to school to be in casting or in P and like picking up pilots, find somebody or find a group of people that are pre-existing, that have been friends for a very long time, let a core group that this already exists. This is easy. This is simple. They can go in, they get everybody's dynamic. They can tell that they've been friends for years. And this, this could be a show. This could be an actual show. Not, you know, it's just too hard when you start casting. It's just too hard. And people are smart. They figure it out real quick what's true and what's not. Well, the audience is very sophisticated yes. now. Yes, the audience yeah. knows how. With all the reality shows now, and all the, you know, the social media right after it, and the, and the the reunions, and the all the the people that have their own podcasts about all these shows, there, there's you can't fool anybody anymore. Right, you really can't. You really can't. Well, before you go, tell everybody what's going on. With so people have a chance to watch some of your Peacock episodes. Yeah, it's a bummer we're not yeah. doing it anymore, but they okay. gave us the opportunity to do three episodes. Um, 
we basically are just recapping the show. So you're basically watching the show with Brittany and I, I mean, recapping my, it. Everyone is loving it. They really they did. And I wasn't so sure what watch, people were going to think and they uh, watch loved them. it. Watch them and let Jax know that you I know. It. I yeah. would love to do more of those. I think it was kind of a budgetary thing and uh, they wanted it, uh, the production company was amped and i think uh i don't know if bravo shut it down i don't know if anybody shut, i don't know i don't know if it was a budgetary thing but uh it was just really awesome and we were so blessed to be part of that and just yeah. thank you to peacock for having us do that but it's a lot of fun it was really funny and the best part about it is all i had to do was come downstairs and jump on my couch and go to work it was great <laughs> it was great everybody was a lot of fun and basically talking about people and not people having to talk about me it was yeah. great you know i get to pick everyone's life apart it was nice yeah and uh it was actually shocking like i said as you guys know i don't really watch the show so that's the first time i was watching episodes of Vanderpump Rules and for the first time and just being like oh my god oh my god I was actually feeling like a, a fan for a second yeah you know? it was interesting and it was just in in awe and I became I became a fan again especially of Katie I became a fan of Katie you know and yeah. I, uh and James, I just really liked it. I, I had fun yeah, doing they're, it. They're both great this season. They really are. And I, I didn't realize. Really getting to know them like we haven't before. I've always bumped heads with Katie too in the past. And um, I really saw her this year. And, and I, I felt bad what she had to go through with, with Tom and Schwartz. And uh, it's just, it was a messy situation. But uh, I think Katie's doing a lot better. And I'm definitely a fan for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then you guys have your show, your podcast. Yes. When Reality Hits. Um, it's awesome. We're just talking, you know. Everything in life, uh, being on reality, being married and having kids on reality. Uh, basically, it's Brittany making me cry every episode. No, I'm kidding. Uh, it's, just, it's just a lot of fun. We're going to talk to other villains on reality because let's be honest, if you don't have a villain on reality show, reality show doesn't exist. It doesn't work. You got to have the bad guy. And I'm actually Wait, don't giving you people- have a, don't you have another show coming out? Oh, I do, but we can't talk about that oh, either. Oh, okay. I, I, you know what? Everybody else gets to talk about their new shows coming out and mine. I, I'm the one that shot mine first. Okay. And this is all coming out before mine. Okay, it's well, like, it, it's yes, out there, though. It is. Is it out there? Okay, I, then you don't talk. Okay. This is my knowledge. All right. You're doing some type of show, like a Big Brother competition something, and it's like villains. Former villains in life and in reality shows get together to do something. That's what I've heard. Anyway, it sounds juicy. <laughs> it sounds juicy. And if that show, if I dreamt that up, you, someone take that idea too, but I don't think I did. Anyway, that <laughs> sounds, that sounds good. So, yeah. So, but the reality show, or I'm sorry, the reality show, the, uh, the uh, podcast right now is, is a lot of fun. We're having so much fun with it. And it's, it's nice to be able to, uh, to clarify up a lot of stuff that's happened over the years, you know, used to be able to, I film a show and then I'd have to clarify everything up six months later down the line doing a talk show. Now I get to clarify my mistakes up on a weekly basis, which is nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And like, I'm excited to talk to other villains from other shows. Cause like I said, villains are the ones that make the shows happen. I think, and I think it's nice to give them a little bit of a platform and explain why they're such villains. So yeah. it's exciting. It's a lot of fun. And it's just another thing that Brittany and I are doing together and we're enjoying it. And then you're just busy with Cruz. Busy with Cruz, busy being a dad. and So you know, gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. He's such a I'm cutie. I'm like, I go, oh my God, he is so good looking. And Lala's like, uh, Cruz is two and has a jawline. <laughs> I know. They always say like his jawline. I know. I know. I mean. I know. I no, know. all the kids are so cute. I love seeing all the kids. Almost, almost time to think about another one pretty soon, I think. I, well, I, you know, I just, I, I told you, did I ever tell you how you get pregnant with the second one? Besides having sex, you do sex. <laughs> Listen, I just heard from another person. It's called the Heather McDonald method. I've gotten <laughs> hundreds of people that said they've tried every uh, other things. My method is free, but it's just people don't think about it. They start peeing on the sticks. When am I ovulating? All that stuff. What you do is after you finish the period, uh -huh. you have sex every other day for 10 to 14 days. Not every day, every other day. I'm telling you. Every other day after? At the period the, ends. Yeah. Not before the period. The period ends. Okay. She's done with her period. All right. Then every other day for two weeks, you have sex. It's a lot of sex. But it's every other day. <laughs> and try it because I can't. I just heard it from another girl today that said, I can't believe that it worked because we've tried a bunch of other things. Really? And, so, and it really works because I had trouble getting pregnant with my second just uh -huh. because you're busier with the one. Right. And I was in my, like, I was like 34 or whatever. So I was like, okay, it was a little harder than when I got pregnant with her first. And this girl told me it. And I was like, all right, done. Wow. And that's why I spread the word of it. Cause it's, Hey, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but it's worth trying for a month. I'll try it. Yeah. I'll try it. If you're why ready not? for it. Why not?
start your whole modeling agency. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Follow Jack. Thank you for having me. Oh, it was fun. so good seeing you. So juicy. Love so ya. juicy. <laughs> Well, what a great interview. As you guys know, please go to heathermcdonald.net and get your tickets to my live show. And if you can't go to the Vegas show, we are so excited to say we are doing another live stream. This will be the third one I've done of a live show. They're always well-received. Everyone is always thrilled that they did it. Right now, you just go to heathermcdonald.net, click on that and get your ticket so you're ready to watch it. You have several days to watch it. It's a great price. and you'll be, it'll be like you're in Vegas. So if you can't see me in person in Vegas, make sure you get that and that you don't forget. Otherwise you'll be really sad and you'll be crying about it and there's nothing I can do. Thank you.